Alright, so this is exciting. So today I want to share with you everything I learned about the Indian economic situation and by the end of the video how I will use this information to make a lot of money from it. I'm super excited, so let's get right into it. Let's talk about India, home to the second most populous country, with 18% of the world's population. Over 1.3 billion people live here, famous for things like Bollywood and its massive movie industry, the sport of cricket, known as the second religion, and it's the birthplace of yoga over 5,000 years ago. They even gave us the world's most famous diamonds that have ever existed in human history, like the Blue Hope, which the Titanic diamond was based on. But there are a couple of other interesting things about India that you might not have known. Its economy is set for explosive growth this coming decade. At the end of 2022, Morgan Stanley published a research paper on future investment opportunities. And in the paper, they wrote that India is on track to become the world's third largest economy by 2027, surpassing both Japan and Germany. They'll have the third largest stock market by the year 2030. The research paper then goes on to say that India's GDP could more than double from the $3.5 trillion it has today to over $7.5 trillion by the year 2031. It also estimates that the Bombay Stock Exchange, which is India's stock market, could grow at 11% per year on average until they reach a $10 trillion market cap. Now, what the heck does all that mean? It means that India's stock market could outperform the US's over the next decade. In a world that's waiting for a recession, experiencing negative growth in the equity market where bonds are barely making any money for people, this could be a huge investment opportunity. As somebody who has never invested outside of the US, I wanted to find out exactly what is going on. So, VisualCapitalist.com has a really interesting prediction about what will happen in 2024. Artificial intelligence, for example, will pop up everywhere, and we're already seeing this with tools like ChatGPT, which is taking over the internet by storm. Apparently, the crypto winter will continue, and even though we're seeing Bitcoin slightly bounce up this year, it might not last. Real global GDP will be between 1.5 to 2 percent, thanks to the slowdown in economic growth, and India will have a really strong year. And when I read that one, it led me down a rabbit hole where I found research papers published by banks like Morgan Stanley and S&P Global, which say that India will be one of only three economies in the world that can generate more than $400 billion in annual economic output growth from 2023 onward. And this will rise to more than $500 billion after 2028. Now, that translates to 11% growth to the GDP. So, is that actually good or bad, and how can you even tell? Here are some stats by comparison. In 2022, the US GDP was estimated to grow 2%. Economists are predicting that in 2023, the US GDP will grow 0.2%. Just 0.2%, and it won't even recover until 2024, when it will grow 1.7%. Now, China, by comparison, which is usually the global leader in economic growth, grew only 3% in 2022. India, by comparison, though, is going to grow 6%. And remember, anytime there's an economic slowdown, it usually means people are going to work less, we're going to make less, we're going to consume less. Therefore, companies are going to make less, which is usually a bad thing for the stock market. So, for India to grow at 11% over this next decade is pretty insane. So, one of the questions I had was, why is India's economy growing so fast, and why is the rest of the world not? And how could I get in on this growth? Now, there are three main reasons for why this is happening. Global offshoring, financial transformation, and energy transition. Global offshoring refers to when a country outsources its production to another country. Now, historically speaking, the world just said to India, here, have two of the most important things anyone can do, software development and customer service. But here's the thing, India has the biggest pool of talented engineers in the world, and India has one of the youngest populations in the world. The median age is 28.4 years old, which also really helps them boost their overall economic output. Now, India was also voted as the second biggest market for freelance hire by Upwork in 2020, having 12.6% of the market share. 
Now, the amount of people that are available for hire is estimated to double to more than 11 million people, and that's because the budget for outsourcing is going to go from $180 billion a year like it is today to over $500 billion a year by 2030. But it's not just customer service and software development. They're also building factories, which is why India's manufacturing is set to increase to 21% of their GDP by the year 2031. Now, the second reason why India is set to crush this next decade is going to blow your mind. It's because of their digital transformation. In 2009, India came up with a program called Aadhaar. This was a biometric authentication system, so by scanning a fingerprint, a retinal scan, or a facial ID scanner, it made it easier for people to access programs like social security, to pay taxes for banking, healthcare, and shopping. And because this program is now part of something called India Stack, which is a decentralized utility for payments, it made it a lot easier for people and businesses to apply for credit and loans a lot cheaper and a lot more efficiently than ever before. Now, this was an extremely controversial program when it came out, but a 2018 report found that customers actually got better prices and they waited less in line for their food. If a store owner, for example, tried to scam their customers by weighing their rice bags down with hidden pebbles and stones, people actually have the ability to downvote those stores because the government has the ability to shut down underperforming stores. This incentivizes India to build better businesses. Now, this system, as good as it sounds, may or may not work in the US for privacy and data collection reasons. But the point is, India has a lot more people, and they need to be digitized and brought in and onboarded much faster, which is why the US is much more privileged in this regard. But the point is, India is coming up with some super innovative solutions that are helping supercharge their economic growth. And speaking of financial growth, the number of households making $35,000 a year will go up from 5.6 million households to over 25 million households by the year 2031. And more income means more spending, which means in theory, India's stock market should go up. Now, the third biggest reason why India is set to crush this next decade is because of the energy transformation. It's estimated that at least two-thirds of India's energy consumption will come from renewable energy sources as the world transitions from fossil fuels to renewables. India should see massive amounts of investment opportunities and innovations in this field, which will help them become much more efficient, productive, and of course increase their income and overall economic output. At this point in time, it's pretty much unanimous, and all economists agree that India is set to crush and do really, really well in this next coming decade. My question, though, is knowing all of this information, is it possible for us to invest our money in a way that invests into this bright future so we can make a higher return? I did not know the answer to this question when I first started making this video, but here's what I learned. Some stocks in India are going to 10 times, some of them will 100 times, but finding that one stock is almost impossible. So rather than trying to look for a needle in a haystack, it might be better to consider what are called ETFs, exchange traded funds, which are bundles of stocks that look for a certain set of criteria. For example, the emerging market. And here are just some of the more popular ETF options people like to invest in to get exposure to India's stock market. But trying to find that one stock that's going to 100 times your money and make you rich is not a skill that I have. I'm not an expert, and because I have nothing to sell you, I'm just going to say I don't know which one it's going to be. But before you walk away and before you get disappointed, check this out. This is about to blow your mind. According to Barron's, if you had invested $1 million into the US stock market in December of 1992, today you would have roughly $9.2 million. That's a ton of money. But if you had taken that same $1 million and put it into China's stock market, that money today would be worth $600,000. Not million dollars, thousand dollars. And if you had taken that same $1 million and put it into India's stock market, today you would have $8.2 million. So, still a lot of money, but not as good as the US. The US stock market could still do better over the next 10 years, despite the fact that India might have a higher growing GDP. How does that even work, right? This is because the GDP is not a direct correlation to how well the stock market does. In 2008, for example, the S&P 500, the stock market, lost 40%. But that same year, the US GDP was down only 4.3%. And in the next year, 
In 2009, the US GDP was down 2.5%. It's crazy, you would think that the GDP was a lot more connected to the stock market, but it's not. Now on the flip side of this, the US GDP averaged less than 2% per year from 2008 up until this point. But the US stock market has averaged 9.15%, including dividends. Another example, in 2020, the US GDP was down 3.4%, but the stock market went up 18.4%. This happens because the stock market is so much more complicated than the GDP or the country's economic output. It also has to do with things like geopolitics, government support, social sentiment, interest rates, foreign exchange rates, central bank powers. It is so much more complicated than any one factor. And it's also why, even though China has had insanely amazing growth over the last few decades, the US stock market still did better. I can't provide financial advice, but I do encourage you to delve deeper into this topic because it has the potential to be a life-changing investment. Thanks for watching. Subscribe for more weekly investment tips. Leave a comment below. Happy investing.